Proudly we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Army and your Air Force to bring you this story as proudly we hail the spirit that pioneered America. Our story is entitled Yellowstone Kelly, the story of the soldier, hunter, army scout, Luther Sage Kelly, who helped blaze the trails into Wyoming. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment, but first, young man, if you're interested in continuing your education, here is important news for you. The senior service of our armed forces, the United States Army, urgently needs qualified technicians to operate and maintain the many kinds of equipment that science has brought into being. Right now, men are being trained in such varied fields as radio, radar, meteorology, mechanics, electronics, photography, and many, many others. This training is given by the finest technical training schools in the world. It's an excellent opportunity for young men with intelligence and ambition. It can be the start of a great career for you. For full details, visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station. Do it today. And now your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production, Yellowstone Kelly. <laughs> Chuck, ain't you game? Don't you want to? It's lying, Luther, no matter what you say. It ain't really lying, Chuck. At least it won't do anyone any harm. But what if we get caught, Lou? You know, they could put us in jail. Well, I'll, I'll have to lie the most. Can't you lie just a little? Well, you go in first. I'll wait for you here. Chuck, lying's only wrong when it hurts someone. What we're going to tell them can't even hurt ourselves. Uh, just as I said, Luther, you go first. If you make it, I'll give it a try. Well, if that's the way you feel, I don't... Don't what, Luther? I don't care if you never come in. You getting mad, Luther? Mad at me? Chuck, I think your tongue is stronger than your spine. All you need's a little backbone. It's still lying, Luther. I, I know, I know. You think it's wrong. Well, not very wrong, Luther. At least the way you explain it. I ain't got all day, Chuck. Thought we agreed on this last night. Well, if you don't get caught, Luther, I'll come in right after you. How soon right after? After everything's... Well, I mean, after you tell them your story and if they believe it. Hmm. Shouldn't take more than ten minutes. I'll be there. I hope so, Chuck, because you promised me. And it's better you lie to them than to lie to me. No matter what I do, I'll be lying to someone. Young man, what can I do for you? I want to join the Army. No, oh, you do. Mm -hmm. well, it's not as easy as all that, just wanting to. There's questions to be answered. I reckon I can answer them. Bring that chair up to the desk, and I'll get out the papers. Name? Kelly. Full name? Luther S. The S is for Sage. <laughs> Did you folks think you'd be a wise man to give you that for a middle name? <laughs> was my mother's name before she wed. Uh, uh, where do you live? Lima, New York. Born where? Geneva, New York. When? Geneva, New York. That's where you answered that. Can you tell me when? <laughs> July 27th. Uh... 
I'm old enough to be a soldier, Sergeant. You calling me a sergeant won't make me one. I'm a corporal at uh, two stripes, you know. You forgot to give me the year of your birth. Why is it so important? I'm healthy and I'm strong. What's the year? It's important. Uh, 18, 1849. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that's it. Eight, eight, 1849. Uh, one and ten and five... 49 to 65, then... Uh, my boy, you're not old enough yet. Maybe it was 48. Yeah, 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 that's it. Uh, it, it could have been 47. 47, would, would 1847 make me old enough? 49's right, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Uh, he's a friend of mine. You in yet, Luther? In 10 minutes, Chuck, you should have waited. Corporal was just telling me that I'm... Too young. 16's too young. But, Luther, you said... That I'd lie about my age. And you didn't? Wouldn't have done much good, Kelly. We'd have found out sometime. Well, what do we do now, Luther? Wait a year. And then if your folks say it's all right, you can join when you're 17. I'll be back then. I'll be back with them. you were gonna lie about your age. Couldn't lie, Chuck. When I got in there... But the lie wouldn't hurt anyone, Luther. Nobody but me, Chuck, and... But I... you said last night... Yeah, I, I know, I know, I know, but... I, I got to thinking, Chuck, if a man will lie, he'll steal. And if he'll steal, he'll go on to other things. Yeah. Yeah, I, I see what you mean. I'll come back next year with you, Luther. I, I'm certain my folks will say all right, too. It's me, Mom! Oh. I, I forgot the lock stuck in the back door. Well, why are you so out of breath, Lisa? Been in a fight with your friend Chuck? Oh, no, no, me and Chuck ain't fighting anymore. Leastways, not one another. Well, son, when you get your breath, tell me why you're so excited. Mom, ne next year... Whatever it is for next year, Luther, can wait until next year. Mom, I... next year, will you let me be a soldier? The corporal said I could be with your permission. So that's why you're so excited. <laughs> Next year, you may have other ideas, Luther Sage Kelly. So until you then... You may forget it, Mom, but I won't. No, Mom, I won't forget it. Luther Kelly didn't forget it. He came back to see the corporal a year later with his mother's permission, allowing that he could be a soldier. It was March of 1865 when Luther took his basic training on Governor's Island in New York Harbor as a private in Company G of the 10th Infantry Regiment. He soldiered the winter at Fort Ripley, Minnesota, and in the spring of 1866 was promoted to corporal and assigned to Fort Wadsworth in the Dakota Territory when... Corporal Kelly, I sent for you because I have a job that I feel you can do perhaps better than any other soldier in camp. Thank you, Captain. I can only do my best. What is it, sir? Our rations are getting low. If we're to replenish, a mule train has to get through to Sauk Center. I'm not a mule driver, Captain. I know, I know, Kelly, I know. We have other drivers. And what'll I... Kelly, you've been pretty good as a scout in this territory. Now, I want you to... Yes, Captain? ...to lead a mule train back to Minnesota. But a scout... Now, the river has overflowed its banks, so you'll have to find a new trail, because the regular one is underwater. Well, can't we drive the train sort of parallel to the old route? No, Kelly. The bridge is washed out at the main junction. you never get the team to cross. Uh, sir, I, I think we can go west a little and then backtrack northeast enough to get around the floods. Mm-hmm. Now, you'll have three wagons with drivers. You can start early tomorrow morning. Um, Captain... Corporal, the instructions were clear. Captain, if it's all right with you, I just as soon start right away. We can get ten miles before sundown. I like that spirit, Corporal. Leave when you're ready. The wagons are loaded with some food and extra blankets. Here, so 
the Y hole of the mules. Something's wrong with the harness on the left side. Well, we got a repair kit, haven't we? I remember checking it off of my list before we started. Yeah, we got a kit, and I guess we better fix it before we go any further. Oh, there, how you! Can't you stop these mules? They're not only slow starters, they're slow stoppers as well. Whoa! Ah. Hey! Uh. 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 Can, can you fix it before the other wagons get caught up to us? Let me look and see. Yeah. This can't be fixed. Wow, we got spare straps, haven't we? Corporal Kelly, we used the last two spares yesterday. My job is to pick the trail. Yours is to keep this wagon rolling. I know. Hey, wait, I... A minute. wait a minute. Wait a minute. Maybe this cowhide out of my boot will hold the strap together till we reach Sock Center. Now, just a second. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Yeah, after all, we've only got another two days traveling to go. We can get harness leather at Sauk Center, but I'm worried. That part of the harness gets most of the pull. We're both worried, driver, but we got a chance. At... Come on, let's get aboard. Yeah. Hey, uh, yeah! Yeah, you hear me? Yeah! I don't take much stock in your commands. Now listen, you long-eared, velvet-coated nags. Get a move on. Yeah! Ah, that's better. <laughs> they sure are slow starters, like you said. Well, Corporal, that was a strong pull. One of the cowhide loops just snapped. How, how many loops did you make? Made a dozen, all separate, so as one going bad won't mean too much harm. Yeah! Ah, uh, better cut left of that pine knoll and keep her on as high ground as you can. The rims are sinking in the mud already. Listen. I don't hear nothing. I think another loop just snapped. Well, maybe if we make a cross pine over the other loops. That might help. Let's try it. Whoa! Wow! Hey. <laughs> Your mules obeyed for once. <laughs> Seldom know what to expect of them. Here, you lock the brake and I'll bind this belt over the loops. Hey, what about your pants if you're using them? Yeah, I've been eating too much and these pants fit extra tight anyway. They'll stay put. We gotta make up lost time. We're going to reach Sauk Center tomorrow. Well, with the help of the belt from my pants and the cowhide laces from your boots, we'll make it. <laughs> well, sure am glad that trip is over. You mean half the trip? We still got to return. Well, that'll be easier because the trails are drying up fast. Hey, I thought Sauk Center would be bigger than this. Just a handful of buildings. Well, size don't interest me as long as our rations are here. Um, uh, I'll check in at the store and you and the other men pull the wagons to the rear loading platform. Well, I guess you mean one at a time. That store won't have three loading platforms. Yeah, any way you say. Just load the stuff as fast as you can. As we can. Yep. We want to start back to Wadsworth tonight. Me and the other men were kind of figuring on an evening's entertainment before. This town's too small for all of us. We'll do better after we get home. No chance of some time out after we load. We we, we can get an early start in the morning. We No chance at all. We'll be well rested. Oh, and no, we'll you start. won't. No, you won't. Not after one of your nights out. Come on, now. We got along all right so far. Let's get the job done, and then we'll have us a time. I guess I can't win you over, Kelly. Oh, by the way, don't forget the harness piece you were going to get. I won't. You get the wagons loaded while I check off the grub list with the storekeeper. I'll take care of the harness strap. While you're in the store, I'll pull around back. Don't forget the straps. Yeah, I won't. We got here by the grace of a pair of cowhide bootlaces. And don't forget them mules. You mean the uh, <laughs> slow starters and the uh, slow stoppers. Yeah. You know, it's a funny thing. Mules is a lot like people. Some people. And what would you be meaning by that? Well, you take that off mule there now. Generally, he's got one of the sweetest dispositions of going. What you might say, a real nice fella. Yeah. Go on. And then for no good reason, he'll get an idea in his head. Plant them front feet, bow his neck, and stand as steady as a rock. I can talk my fool head off, and he he just stand. You might say he may, he make me do his bidding. That's a mighty lot of talk about a mule. 
And if I've been adding up correctly, you figure that off mule should be rightly named Kelly. Is that right? Now, I didn't say no such thing, but uh, being you're in a palavering mood, well, I... I mean, uh, can it be that you've seen the error of your ways? Mister, get yourself down off that wagon. Now, we've been through some trying times on this trip. But if you think for one minute I'm going to let a mule skinner take over the range this year, Now, get that wagon around to the loading dock and use a little muscle on them supplies. You're going to be ready to roll in an hour. Yes, sir. And fella, keep an eye on that off mule. You are listening to the proudly we hail production Yellowstone Kelly. We'll return in just a moment for the second act. Among the proudest men in uniform today are the soldiers of the Army's Airborne Service. Their exploits are once again making history, and their prowess in battle is earning them new fame. Right now, the Army is accepting applications for direct assignment to the Airborne from men who voluntarily enlist. It's an opportunity to associate with a top-notch group of men in an outfit that's second to none. Young men, if you'd like to find out more about qualifying for the Airborne, why don't you visit your local Army and Air Force recruiting station? Learn how you can enlist directly for service in this exciting outfit, whose paratroopers are the envy of all servicemen. The recruiting sergeant will give you full information. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of Yellowstone Kelly. Luther Sage Kelly was an old soldier before the age of 20, for he already had a three-year hitch under his belt. He wanted to explore more of America's undeveloped territory, so he started out after his discharge to have a look at the upper areas of the Missouri River. With what training he had in service, he felt himself ready to be a scout when... Yeah, there must be someone who can do it. Major Sawyer, for weeks we've been trying to get mail toted from Fort Peck. Look, it's piling up, and some of it must be important. Lieutenant, I'm not as interested in the quantity or its importance as I am... Yes, Major? As I am in who killed the last two mail riders. Well, can't we send soldiers by the mail this time? No. Yeah, our orders are to hire civilian scouts. We need our own men here at Buford, just in case. Well, after the last two riders were scalped clean on a whistle, we may have trouble finding anybody else for the job. Yeah, there must be one in this region who knows the route and who can outwit Indians with killing ideas. For three days, we try to locate one, but... Lieutenant, I have an idea. Might work. In fact, he might be crazy enough to want to try it. You know someone, Major? No, no I don't know him. But I heard of him a couple of times. A fellow named Kelly. Captain Prescott at Fort Wadsworth. Met him a week ago when he came here to replenish his ammunition. What about Kelly? Prescott said he was a soldier. Out of service now. A humdinger when it came to leading Russian trains across unmapped regions. And that Kelly was staying in this area doing some scouting along the Missouri. Oh. Now, if he works his way down to Buford, should we latch on to him for the job? Yeah, we can ask him. The most he can say is no. You seem to think that he'll say yes. Yeah, I got a hunch he will. Prescott said this man Kelly would make a darn good scout with a little more Indian experience. <laughs> well, if it's experience he needs, this will be to his calling. All right, I'll have him report to you if he comes to the fort. Rufus, something's wrong. I think I... Yeah. I hear something, too. Sound. Don't say it. Not loud, anyway. Luther, I think it's engines. Huh. He's sneaking up on us. Why in blazes does he yell? You figure it, Luther. I never could understand an engine. You better dismount and hide the horses, Rufus. I don't like the looks of this. The looks? Why, man, we can't see 20 feet. It's so dark. Anyway, let's hide the horses in the clump of birches over there. Uh. Maybe this engine isn't alone. Easy there. Easy there, boy. Easy there. Easy does it. Come on, boy. 
Uh, Kelly, I got a but sense we'd that... We'd better walk back to back. Or at least stand that way, because if we don't... We... There are more of them, Luther. That arrow came from the north. It looks like the engine we heard was decoying for his friend. Engines may travel alone or in groups, but hardly ever in pairs. That means... Maybe we're surrounded and don't know it. Yeah. They sound good hitting trees, Rufus. You ever get shot with an arrow? Ain't a nice way to die. Well, we got to make a break for it, Luther, before they circle us too tight. You got any ideas? Just one. Been saving it for last, because it's the only one I have. Yeah. Well, I'll fight as long as you will, Luther. We can fight our way out of this. I hope. We can't fight through them if they're half a tribe. But we can outsmart them. At least we can try. Uh, scouting's one thing, Luther, but matching wits with you don't know how many engines is another thing. Unleash the horses, Rufus, and give them a good slap in their shank. Uh -huh. Make them run towards that saddle valley between those two hills. Well, without horses, Luther, we'll be in a pretty pickle. Yeah, you're right. Well, whatever it is, we'll be in it for sure without horses. Now you lose them, but get the mail bags before you do. Yeah, they're gone, Luther. It's mighty quiet. You got any more ideas? Listen, you hear that? Hear what? Listen, those bushes cracking. Yeah, now I do. Our but... troubles are over. Over? You mean over? Sure. These engines out here are mighty short of horses. They're not after us as much as after our animals. <laughs> Come on, Ruth. Long walk to Fort Buford. Especially with these... Mail sacks. Kelly got back to Buford all right and made his report to Major Sawyer. Carrying mail and losing horses wasn't exactly what Luther Sage Kelly had in mind when he once boasted that someday he'd be the best darn army scout in the Yellowstone region. A couple of winters found him hunting and trapping along the Milk River in Montana, and in the seasons in between, he explored the Yellowstone River. Its every crook and cranny would be remembered by the former corporal. His woodsman fame continued to spread until General George Forsythe asked him to scout the Missouri and Yellowstone River regions for the Army during the war with the Sioux. Peace with the Indians sent Kelly back to his hunting and trapping when in 1876. Hey, Kelly. I hear it, General Miles is... Looking for someone to be a scout. Well, I'm not too interested right now, Smitty. We're out for bear this trip. Yeah, I know, but I thought you'd Not be... interested's the word. Come on, let's get a trot going. Miles has a good reputation in these parts. Look, Smitty, let's get the bear and forget the scouting just for a while. You know, General Miles has had scouts before. This time he wants a new one. A real tough one who can fight as well as scout. I'm for fighting a bear with this rifle and for fighting no one else. <laughs> you being a soldier once should hit it off real good, uh, General Miles. Still not interested, Smitty. I'm after bear. Well, Miles ain't interested in no weakling. I hear he wants a scout who can lick a bear. Hold it, Smitty. I think... Did you see something? I think we got us bear. About 100 yards northeast. See that cover of partridge on the wing? Huh? Something must have scared him to make him rise like that. Well, sure we leave the horses here? Yeah, might as well. Old Bruin might smell them before he smells us. <laughs> now, if we're spread apart, we can close in better on the old boy. You still think it's a bear? I know it is. In fact, I can see him now. Hold up a minute. Did you get him, Kelly? I allowed one bullet for him. Come on. He's a beaut. Lots of meat and lots of hide. You can have it all. Well, you wanted it, Kelly. Besides, what'll I do with meat and the bear skin? I'll take the left front paw. You can give the meat to that family of settlers we passed yesterday. A uh, skin will make a good blanket. No, it won't. At least not for outdoors. It's too heavy when it gets wet. Shall, uh, uh, shall we dress him here? No, let's make a sled and drag him to the settlers. Uh -huh. First, I'm 
Taking the paw. Uh, <clears throat> He's heavier than I thought. Look at that paw. It's a foot across the open palm. Oh, what you gonna do with it, Kelly? It ain't eatable. Not for me, Smitty. You'll take it. I'll take it. Yeah, to General Miles. As soon as I get through. Oh, Miles won't want a bear's paw, Kelly. He'll like this one, I bet. Besides being a foot across, how's it different from any other? Oh, this one will be different. Sort of a calling card. Personally engraved with my name. <laughs> Give me your knife. Its point is sharper than mine. <laughs> General Nelson Miles was mighty impressed by this unique card, the bear's paw on which was carved the name of Luther Kelly. Miles hired Kelly and made him chief army scout for the District of Yellowstone. It was the pinnacle, but not the end, of a career that started when Luther Kelly couldn't lie about his age. When close to 50 years old, Kelly went to Alaska to explore the region for a railroad for the Army. Nobody called him Fairbanks. In the Spanish-American War, he was a captain of volunteers in the Philippines, but nobody called him Manila. To the day he died in Paradise, California in 1928, it was always Yellowstone Kelly. Young men, when you volunteer for service in the United States Army today, you can rest assured that your best talents and natural skills will be considered in giving you an assignment to your liking. Yes, today's modern Army fits the right men to the right jobs, and real merit is recognized with faster promotions and more opportunities. Now, more than ever before, men with above-average ability are finding better jobs and more important assignments in the U.S. Army. Why not investigate an Army enlistment for yourself today and find out just what you stand to gain? Full information is available at your nearest U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center for the United States Army and United States Air Force Recruiting Service. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking and inviting you to tune in the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>